When you became a nurse, I bet you had no idea of the rich history behind nursing. And Florence Nightingale, who was she? She is known as the founder of modern nursing. And although nursing existed to some degree before Florence Nightingale, it would never be the same after her. Hi there. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my nursing channel. My name is Nurse Master Charlie. Today I'm going to be finishing up the second part of the two-part series on the history of nursing. This is going to be specifically on Florence Nightingale and who was she? So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Click on the like button and the notification bell so you can be notified of when I release new videos. Now if nursing did not exist, what would you be doing? What would I be doing? Maybe in the comments you can leave me a profession that you think you might have gotten into if you had you not become a nurse. And whether you're going to school to become a nurse or you have already gone through school and you are a nurse, there is a good chance that you said the Nightingale Pledge. But who was Florence Nightingale and why was she so important to nursing? Florence Nightingale once said, I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took an excuse. It's kind of like Nike's just do it. Paraphrasing, of course. I bet when you became a nurse, you had no idea of the rich history behind nursing. But who was Florence Nightingale? Well, she is known as the founder of modern nursing. But who was she? And what did she really do? And why was she so special? What did she actually do for nursing? Now, Florence Nightingale was born May 12, in 1820. She was born to a very wealthy family the Nightingale family. Her father, William Nightingale, he was a very wealthy landowner. He was educated and he was the one responsible for educating Florence Nightingale and her sister. Their mother, Frances, wanted the best for her two daughters. And that meant at that time to marry wealthy, kind of as she had did. And her sister, her older sister, was named Parthenope. Now Florence was named after the city of Florence, Italy. And prior to that time, Nobody had really been named Florence. So her name was kind of a unique name at the time. Now the Nightingale family was very well connected. They had dinners at their large estate, which would bring in a lot of politicians and the wealthy people of that day. Now on these large estates that the Nightingale family owned, there were small villages. And Florence Nightingale would take the time to go and care for the poor people and the sick people in those villages. And at that point, when she was approximately 16 years of age, she had a vision or she heard God's voice tell her to become a nurse. And that's the direction that she chose her pathway for her life. And nursing in that time was not a very prestigious job. Women at that time could actually choose to either go to jail or go be a nurse. Um, it was a very low so social status type of a job. And Florence Nightingale came from a very social elite class. And Florence Nightingale would ask her mother and her father numerous times, year after year after year, if she could go to school. Now Florence Nightingale was educated by her father. And he educated her in the languages of German, Latin, French, Italian, in philosophy, history, and especially mathematics. That was Florence's favorite and that would play a part in her life in the future. And she would petition and ask her mom and dad year after year after year if she could go to school. First, she wanted to go and study mathematics because she was really good at it and they would deny her. And at some point she questioned them about if she could go to be a nurse and that was kind of unheard of at the time. So she just kind of sat around her home taking care of the, the villagers and then finally, after numerous and numerous times of asking her parents, they finally agreed to allow her to go to nursing school. So in about 1844, she enrolled in the Institution for Protestant Deaconesses. This is, was a church hospital that was operated by a pastor by the name of Theodore. This was in Kaiserswerth, Germany. She would study there for a few months and then at some point she went and traveled. She traveled to Paris and some accounts say Egypt. And she watched and learned from the nurses and the monks that she was kind of visiting in these hospitals. And she was kind of learning that they weren't doing that back in Germany at the school that she was going to. 
When she returned from her travels, she re-enrolled in the Kaiserswerth Germany's uh, institution and completed some training and eventually she got a job being a nurse. Now Florence's first job was at a place called the Institution for the Care of Sick Gentlewomen in Distressed Circumstances. I'm not sure what all that means, but after approximately a, a year, she became the superintendent in this institution. In 1853, Florence Nightingale's home country of Britain became involved in a war with Russia. It's actually called the Crimean War. And during this war, there weren't really a whole lot of nurses in a war setting. And remember how I said Florence Nightingale's family was really connected with the politicians and the wealthy people. One of their family friends happened to be the Minister of War. His name was Sidney Herbert. Now back in World War I and World War II, nurses were really needed to help care for the wounded soldiers and the sick soldiers. But in this war, in the Crimean War, nurses weren't really involved in war. And at this time, the military hospitals were kind of operated by military personnel and some military physicians. There weren't really any nurses. Now, at this time also, these wars did not have reporters and social media and satellite as we do in today's time. But there was the first reporter in this war who was sending information back from the Crimean War to England via a telegraph. And he was messaging of all the soldiers that were being killed and the soldiers that were dying from the war. And the parents in England were kind of outraged with all this sickness and dying of their sons. So something had to be done. And Sidney Herbert, who was real good friends with the Nightingales, thought immediately of Florence Nightingale. He wrote her and contacted her and asked her if she could help, and she was ecstatic. She jumped at the chance. She grabbed a couple of volunteers, approximately 38, 39 volunteer nurses, and they headed to the Crimean War. When they arrived at the Crimean War, they arrived into the hospital in a, in a city called Scutari, and they were kind of shocked at what they saw. This hospital was built on top of an old sewer, and the sewage was creeping up into the floor of this hospital. And the feces were about one to two inches thick or more, and soldiers would actually have to walk from one point in their hospi the hospital to another point, for example, to the restroom through the feces. Now, the soldiers of the day were given food, uncooked meat, and if they wouldn't cook it, well, it would spoil, which would create more bacteria and smell. There was rats running around and then the smells and it was all a closed off area. After Florence Nightingale and her volunteer nurses arrived at this military hospital, they were actually kind of restricted in the things that they could do until there was more and more battles and finally the military physicians let them do their thing and they started taking care of the patients. They started changing dressings, changing the patients who were actually just laying, or the soldiers who were actually just laying in their filth. So Florence Nightingale and her nurses started to try to clean the hospital as best they can. They would start caring for the soldiers, cleaning the soldiers, bathing the soldiers who were laying in their filth. And because of the sewage, she would write back to Sidney Herbert, the Minister of War, and give him an update of what was going on in the hospital. So Florence Nightingale was doing her best to make the best of a bad situation. And at night, when there was no really no lights, she would take a lamp and walk through the hospital at Scutari, kind of checking on the patients or on the soldiers. And henceforth, she became known as the lady with the lamp. This is the title that the soldiers would give her. The reporter of the day would telegraph back to England what the soldiers were telling him and what he was seeing. And she was gaining popularity and notoriety unbeknownst to her. Now, while Florence Nightingale was in Scutari, the military hospital, what she also didn't know is she had contracted a bacteria called brucellosis. This causes fever, joint pain, and fatigue, and this would plague her into her later years in life. Now, 
The Crimean War finally ended with the Treaty of Paris, and Florence Nightingale stayed at this hospital until the last soldier went home. Now, when Florence Nightingale returned to England, she returned as a hero and a celebrity with a lot of notoriety, not actually what she wanted, but it just happened in response to the telegraphs and the soldiers that were telling their families what the lady with the lamp had done for them. Now, this celebrity status got her noticed by the queen, and she was invited for tea, and she was even given a, a brooch as a gift from the queen, and they would meet periodically. And Florence Nightingale, being the nurse that she was, found this as an opportunity to petition the queen for change. Now, remember how I said Florence Nightingale was really good in mathematics. What she was doing is she was learning that there was more soldiers that had died from being in the hospital due to infections than they were actually dying from their war injuries. And this information she would present to the Royal Commission on the Health of the Military. And this eventually would result in the formation of the Army Medical College. And this is the type of information that she would present to the Queen. And this is the first time with the help of, of an individual that she worked with that they developed an actual graph of data. It was called the Coxcomb graph, which showed the amount of patients or soldiers that were dying from wound injuries and those that were dying from non-wound injuries, which were something like 4,000 for wound injuries and 19,000 soldiers were dying because of infections. So with this data that she presented, her voice became stronger and stronger. And as time went by, she became more and more ill. And so she traded in her lamp for a pen and a paper and got busy behind the scenes trying to make health care and nursing care reform. Now, people of that day believed that illness was caused by smells. And at this time, Louis Pasteur had postulated his germ theory. And what she was learning is in some areas that were known for really bad smells, those patients weren't dying. And patients were dying in other areas that had good smells, but little did they know at the time that it was because of germs that were causing the infections and the illnesses. Now also during this time, she had acquired a lot of donations that she had put away for a rainy day. And the rainy day was now. Florence Nightingale opened her first nursing school in July of 1860. It was called the Nightingale Home and Nursing Training School for Nurses, which was affiliated with St. Thomas's Hospital. St. Thomas's Hospital has been around today for over 900 years and now is a part of the King's College in London. And Florence Nightingale School is known as the Florence Nightingale School of Nursing and Midwifery. Now due to the effects of the brucellosis, they were kind of taking the toll on Florence Nightingale at this time. So she was never able to be like the superintendent of her own school. Florence Nightingale set the criteria for nursing as a career and on its way as a respected profession. She actually even wanted to make sure that nurses had a collegial relationship with physicians and not a subservient one. Now, as Jesus had sent out his disciples into the world, Florence Nightingale wanted to send out her nurses out into the world to teach nursing so that they can learn to better care for patients. That was her whole desire, to care for the patient. Now today, in the heart of London, stands the Crimean War Memorial, built in 1861. And there is a statue of none other than Florence Nightingale. She wasn't a soldier, but she is still considered one of the heroes of the Crimean War. In 1883, she was awarded the Royal Red Cross by Queen Victoria. And a few months before her death, in May of 1910, she was awarded the Badge of Honor by the Norwegian Red Cross. Now, Florence Nightingale was selfless, driven, and her desire was to make sure that nurses could be what they are today, although she had no idea where it would evolve to. She was so dedicated that she even declined marriage because she felt that, that it would take away her focus from nursing. Now Florence Nightingale died when she was 90 years old and she had left instructions that she wanted a private and quiet ceremony and funeral. She wanted to just fade out into history and she was actually buried at St. Margaret's Church in London.
She has given us a legacy of caring, education, and professionalism, one that we have seen evolve over the last 200 years. She is honored every May 12th, her birthday, for International Nurses Day. That's how we remember her and what she did, her contributions to nursing. Now, this is not an all-inclusive history of Florence Nightingale. This is just a little brief summary that I wanted to share with you because I found the history of Florence Nightingale to be enlightening and inspiring. So remember, when you take that Nightingale Pledge, although it was not written by Florence Nightingale, it is truly inspired by her. That's why it is called the Nightingale Pledge. So make sure you subscribe, click on the notification bell so you can be made aware of when I release new videos and click on the like button. Also in the comments, let me know what you thought about this video. Did you learn something about Florence Nightingale? Did you learn something about nursing? Has it inspired you to become a nurse if you're not a nurse or to become a better nurse if you are a nurse? So thank you for watching. God bless and bye bye. Let me tell you a story about Florence Nightingale. She's the founder of modern nursing. This is not a fictitious tale. She was born 200 years ago, May 12, 1820, in the city of Florence, Italy. This is the city from where she got her name.